In a valley 8 miles southeast of the Norwegian city of Troms, a radar antenna has just broadcast a radio signal, more precisely a brief snippet of radio programming to potential alien listeners, in the signal sent there were some pieces of electronic music specially composed in a tutorial on geometry and the use of binary numbers. This is not the usual approach to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI. Normally, SETI scientists use these antennas in the hope of hearing a signal that would have been transmitted tens, hundreds, or even thousands of years ago. So far, nothing to do. The SETI has officially declared that it has never detected an extraterrestrial signal. But are we really sure that it is so? Conspirators and ufologists believe that SETI received alien signals but were then locked away by the elite system of power. But let's get back to the message sent by METI through the TROMS radio telescope. The idea is simple, send a signal that alerts the aliens that we are here and we await a possible answer. Obviously, patience is needed. TROMS-S transmission was transmitted to one of the closest star systems believed to have a planet similar to the Earth. The goal, GJ273, or more familiarly the star of Leuton, is a red and rough dwarf located 12 light years from our solar system. Since the radio waves travel at the speed of light, we will have to wait more than 20 years before looking for an answer. Despite the lack of immediate gratification, Doug the coach, founder of the non-profit based METI International based in San Francisco, argued that if we really want to show that human beings have a cosmic company, we must take a step forward and take the initiative. Imagine the transmission of TROMS as a first step towards a road of yellow bricks that eventually leads to signaling thousands or millions of star systems. Trying to find aliens by pinging only on a star system is a long shot. But even if it is unlikely that the transmission from Norway provokes an answer from some Liuatinian system alien, you can be sure that it will provoke a lot of Terrans. This is because METI is controversial. For starters, what do you say to someone you have never met, who is a member of a different species? This has been debated in more than a few conferences and much of the conversation is focused on the fact that we should show our negative side. We tell the aliens that we engage in war, we threaten our environment and we deceive other creatures? Personally, I do not train too much on these discussions. These concerns, though of great importance to us, are probably simple curiosities for aliens. But the aspect of METI that really inflames people, including some in the SETI community and even the famous physicist Stephen Hawking, is the possibility that sending signals to space can expose themselves to an existential danger. Suppose the Liuatinians exist and are hostile. If we send a broadcast, no matter what its contents, they could respond with a fleet of interstellar missiles to get us out. Frankly, it's hard to think of a credible reason why the aliens would do it. But why take the chance? My answer is twofold. For starters, we have broadcast in space with high power transmitters, radar and TV, for over half a century. Of course, those signals are not easy to detect in space, at least for someone with our level of technology. But for a company a century or two before us, it would be trivial. And if the aliens are not at least as advanced, they simply will not have those interstellar missiles. But there is something else, often lost in the discussion. Limiting the strong transmissions to the sky could limit not only the efforts to make SETI active, but for many other projects that may require radio signals via radio. If we want to map the outer regions of our solar system, to locate wandering comets, we will have to use radars that are much more powerful than we have today. If we imagine we have interstellar probes, we will need to report to stay in touch. Let's face it, it's impossible to know what our great-grandchildren will find interesting or useful to do. But telling them never to direct a transmitter into the sky is like telling them never to colonize Mars because, after all, there may be indigenous microbes beneath the ground and it's their planet. At this point, personally, I hope the Liuatinians get in touch with us as soon as possible. Dr. Seth Shostak for NBCNews.com